What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Mullet Cast, the podcast where business and pleasure collide. My name is Evan Balmer. Follow me on Instagram at Evan Balmer. Uh, today we're joined by Jeff Crespi. Uh, check out Jeff online at jeffcrespyrocks.com and follow him on Instagram at jeffcrespyrocks. Uh, Jeff is an institution uh, in the Asbury Park and beyond music scene. Uh, you've definitely seen him out at some clubs if you go out to see live music. Um, he's the house photographer for the Stone Pony, the Wonder Bar, Starland Ballroom, uh, many other venues. What's going on, Jeff? All good. Thanks for having me. No problem. It's a pleasure to have you here. Um, like we were briefly talking about, we've been trying to hook this up for like a year. And uh, the craziest thing about what I find about you, and I've talked to someone else about this, is like I see you everywhere. And one place where I saw it the most was at Asbury Underground where I was out and saw like 20 acts and you were like at every single place. So I was like, this dude's like the hardest working man in show business. And then I'd like look at your site and you'd have photos from Starland that night and all different venues all over. Um, and then when I tried to schedule this with you, you're like, oh, I work, I have like a full-time job too. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, it's like day and night, seven days a week for me for years. Right, that's mm -hmm. insane. Yeah. Um, so how did you get started in photography? Um, it was never about photography. Mm. Um, about 15 years ago, my son kind of was that seven, eight year old kid that mm. just kind of started, you know, kind of playing around with my CDs in the house and kind of pulled a few CDs out and started listening to some Kiss CDs. Nice. And, um, he just became this kid that just kind of just would have the big headphones on and be rocking out in the back seat of the car, you know, screaming psycho circus, you know. <laughs> and he didn't even, had no idea about the makeup or anything like that. He just took to the music. Right. And um, Kiss just happened to be playing PNC Bank Arts Center that summer. And I personally, although I'm a huge music lover, mm. haven't been to a live show or a concert in probably over 25 years at that point. Oh, wow. And uh, just something said to me, hey, let me take him. Mm -hmm. maybe, see, maybe we'll have fun. Let's see what it's like. You know, see if he enjoys it. I got two lawn tickets. You know, we sat there and watched you know, all the fire and the booms and the bangs. And, uh, and we had a great time. Right. So I said, okay, let me take him to another one. I think it was actually um, Motley Crue that same summer. Right. So it was Kiss and Motley Crue, like his first two shows, you know. That's cool. And, um, and we had a nice time. So in my head, I was thinking that this could be a cool father-son bonding thing. Gotcha. That's all it was about. At that time, my wife was working for a very, very large music distributor under the Warner Music label okay. um, called ADA, Alternative Distribution Alliance. Sure. And she's not a music person, but she worked in an office downtown Soho. And she came home one day and she says, you know, there's this club in Sayreville that I could probably get you on some guest list for. Okay, so I go check it out with a friend. It seems like a nice club. I could probably take my son there, all ages, you know, uh, venue. Right. So I started taking him to a few shows there. My wife, I would come home with a list of all the schedule, and I'd give it to my wife, and my wife would just kind of look up record labels. Okay, this one, that one, that one, I could get you on a guest list. Right. So we'd go. We didn't even know who the bands were. I didn't even want to listen to them online. We, it was just for the experience. Gotcha. And, of course, just to document you know, our journey, I would take pictures, like, you know, of what was going on, or people we met, you know, that kind of thing. Right. Um, very quickly, though, um, I have a very kind of addictive personality. <laughs> right. So, you know, one show led to three, to seven, to a hundred, wow. you know, kind of a thing. Right. So, very quickly, we were going to a lot of shows, and, you know, we'd be online two hours before the doors, like most fans do, and, hey, this is, you know, Oh, my God, yeah, man, you're coming to this show. There's a show next week that'd be, be really cool. you love it, that kind of thing. Right. So we just, okay, no problem, we'll be there, you know, that kind of thing. And it was really cool, but very quickly we got to be recognized as just fans that were there all the time. That's fun. And um, so it very quickly evolved into something more than just going to a show or two with your son. Mm. And um, that kind of led to everything else down the line. But photography was never part of the picture. The pictures were just something to document for our journey, for us to look back at years later. That's cool. Kind of like a photo album, people we met along the way. Um, people just started noticing 
I guess it was more my son's friends mm. were maybe a little envious that we were at shows all the time that they maybe wanted to be and couldn't. Right. So they would kind of wait at home, like late at night, for me to put up the pictures so they could see, and it kind of became about that. Right. You know, and then my son, a little older, a little older, kind of one of those mall rat kids, <laughs> and... Uh, it just kind of skyrocketed from there. The next thing I know, my son would come home and tell me that, you know, all the kids are talking about me at the mall and kids are in their houses telling my, their parents about me and all that kind of thing. Right. So that's just kind of how it started. So what grade's your son in when he's eight? Is that like sixth grade, <laughs> yeah. fourth grade? So yeah. what is that? So we, we used to, you know, <laughs> you know, <laughs> he would come home and he would go to school every day. Right. You know, he never missed school. Uh -huh. And we'd go to shows three, four times a week. Wow. You know, and, um, uh, he would write all his like you know English reports about the show no and uh, teachers would be like you know your son has such an imagination <laughs> and they'd be like what are you talking about and they'd be he's like really well you know he's, he's writing about all these cool things and these you know uh, bands like war <laughs> right <laughs> you know and I'd be like what this is his real life <laughs> right. like, and they were like what That's you insane. know some parents would not like you know hey I can't believe this guy's doing that right. with his kid but you know, at the end of the day, we were having a ball. That's cool. You know. So did he eventually, like, start playing or anything? Or? He uh, he did. He dabbled a little first with the guitar, didn't take to it too well, and mm. then he asked to play the drums. Right. Um, he took drum lessons for about three years locally, mm. um, and then he ended up playing a little bit with one of the School of Rocks in Marlboro. That's cool. Um, just jamming out with them for some of their shows, and... He, you know, he never got into the whole band thing. Mm. He was more of a, you know, kind of like me at that age, hated authority figures. It was all about you doing what you want, not being told what to do, right? so to speak. So, gotcha. you know, he did his own thing. Right. That's cool. Yeah. So what kind of camera were you using for those first pictures? <laughs> so, so it was always a, f whatever reason I picked the Fuji, you know, to right. start. It was a Fuji point and shoot. And... Uh, <laughs> I would go to so many shows and take so many pictures that each night I would have like six batteries, four memory cards, <laughs> and literally almost a year to the date, every year, the bulb on the flash would burn out. Really? That's how many pictures I would take. And I would literally send the camera to a Fuji place that they would actually replace the bulb for free no as long as it was in that one year, which was the warranty. That's funny. But I went every Fuji, I went along the line <laughs> because I stayed with the same battery. I don't want to go out and buy six new batteries again with a different camera. Right. So I'd always stay with Fuji and keep the same. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Each year was like one, one higher megapixel. <laughs> you right. know, in terms of whatever it was. But. Yeah, it's crazy. Like, I was trying to explain that to my daughter the other day about how I used to walk around with, like, a camera. You're buying a digital camera. Mm -hmm. You got a phone. You know, like, yeah. everything was separate. You know? Yeah, sure. Your life would have been easier today. You yeah. Know? Just walk around with your iPhone. Or yeah, and everybody, everything's one gadget. Right. You know? So then how did you, like, how did the, the photography end of things take off for you? So Starland Ballroom became, you know, pretty much, you know, I was second home, but in reality, we were there more than our own home. Right. Um, so, you know, it just became this place that we felt very comfortable and mm. knew everybody, and everybody expected us almost every night. And, wow. you know, I remember this. I have pictures of, I remember when it, we hit our 100th show. Mm. We had posters made up. I have pictures of my son with all the security guards in front of the building, you know, right. holding up a poster that said, you know, 100th show tonight, God forbid, you know, <laughs> was the band playing, you know, right. that kind of stuff. And it was really cool. It was like, this was insane. Like, I'm looking at my my son and I'm going, this is like the coolest thing in the world. That's like, cool. You know, we have a place to go almost every night that's close to the house right. and enjoy live music and I was not a live music guy back in my day. Mm. I was a club boy, a dance right. club boy. Yeah. Um, I went to maybe a handful of uh, concerts with friends, but more for the social engagement, right. not because of the band. Right. Um, so this was all a new experience for me, too. Like, you know, different styles of music, genres, and we, again, everything was about just going to the show and not knowing what to expect. Right. And every show... He would be dead center against the rail. Mm -hmm. My arms would be locked in, and there'd be bodies falling on my head. And I would just, I would have to lock my arms in because if I let one arm out, people would just, you know, rush right. in. So he was just, just his head could see like over the rail. Right. 
you know, but it was really cool. It was a lot of fun. That is you cool. Know, and, then, and then after years of doing that, mm. a lot of the photographers, you know, who obviously I made friends with there, were egging me on. Right. You know, oh, why don't you do this? It's really fun. You're here anyway. And I'm, eh, it's not kind of what my plan was. You know, I just like coming to shows and having fun and meeting people and all that kind of stuff. Right. Oh, come on, come on. And they egged me on a little, like, Sent a few emails out. Nobody responded. Mm. Um, and then one time I sent an email to this publication that came across Facebook. who right. I didn't know who they were at the time. And uh, this lady wrote me back very nicely. And she says, I love what you do with your son. I'll put you down as a staff photographer and help you get some press passes. It turned out to be um, a publication called Amp Magazine. Right. Which was... At that time, one of the most relevant magazines there was. It mm. was uh, online and print. And uh, so I, right from day one, I had access to every single show that came through Starland Ballroom. That's cool. I think I shot about 80 shows in the next 100 days. Wow. Yeah, it was crazy. That and I remember, crazy. I remember having to go home and tell my wife, I got to go to Best Buy and buy a camera, right. like a good one. Right, right. What do you mean? You got to go home and buy How much is it going to cost? I don't know. I don't know. It's like a few <laughs> hundred. It was like six, seven hundred dollars. She goes, no, what do you mean? You spend right. What are you doing? You make it? No, I'm not making no money, but it's, I, I got to do it. Right. <laughs> you know, it was one of those type of things. Gotcha. But, uh, yeah. And so then are you teaching yourself as you're going oh, along? Oh, it was all self-taught. Yeah. I, I do not like, if you, any book on photography, it's just so repetitive. I am not a technical photographer. I don't want to be. Right. Um, if you ask me what settings my camera's on, I couldn't even tell you. Right. It's all passion and feel. That's all it is for me. It's all about the passion and kind of the, the experimentation of what I'm looking at from right. an artistic point of view. Um, and I like it that way. Yeah. You know, so it's, for me, it's just a cool, fun thing that I love to use that kind of the artistic side of what I grew up with mm. and use my photography to bring that out. That's cool. And then how'd you move from Amp Magazine to like becoming staff photographer at it, it different was, venues? It was just kind of little steps along the way. Amp Magazine and then um, Amp Magazine went under. Uh, the editors formed a new magazine, which kind of they changed the way their format was. Um, so I started shooting for some local publications. Um and then uh, there was a guy doing this before me for, mm. the, for the house of Starland, the Stone Pony, and stuff like that. And um, at some point, he decided to step down, and both venues kind of, you know, Stone Pony came to me and said, hey, you ready? And I said, ready for what? Right. They go, you're it, and you're, you're, you're the house photographer, and, you know, it's your name got mentioned in meetings and all this kind of stuff and right. you're out there busting your butt day in day out and you know you're the guy and so that's kind of how that all happened so because it was the same guy at both places it kind of worked out that way that's cool yeah. and was your son still tagging along with you early on yeah i mean he's you know he's he go he doesn't go to really shows anymore right once in a while you know he's very picky now at what he goes to right. but um, yeah, I mean, he would still go at that time. It was still, you know, s club shows, house shows, VFW shows, firehouse shows. I mean, right. we did that all. I mean, I was going out to like Berkeley Heights, Elks Lodges, and, you know, <laughs> I was going, you know, we would do firehouses and Halloween right. shows and all that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's really cool. Yeah, it was, it was wild. Yeah. yeah. So, what's, uh, do you have like a favorite memory or a favorite show from that uh, era, like with your son? There was so many. I mean, uh, you know, everybody always asks me, you know, what's your favorite show? Or, you know, I'd come home, the, the, the laugh of my wife is, is, you know, every night, how was the show? Oh, it was great. I'm like, how could you go to 4,000 shows and never see a bad show? Right, right. I said, because every show has something that I could take out of it. Mm -hmm. You know, in terms of enjoyment, it's like there's something about the live show at this point in my life, that just seems so cool and real. Right. And that was not an experience I had when I was younger. Mm -hmm. You know, I was the guy back in the day that said, we'll go to a concert for, go buy the CD. Right. You know, like, you know, I, I didn't get the whole concert part of it back then. Gotcha. But um, it's just very different now. It's just, uh, and now it's like hard for me to listen to music in the car because it sounds so different, right. you know, than being at a live show. Right. So. When you go to a live show, are you uh, can you still enjoy the music, or are you just in work mode? No, I, that's one of the things, and 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 I, you know, a lot of times people ask me like, what's different with you? 
And for me, I think the difference is, is I always wanted to be part of the show. Mm. I wanted I wanted all of this to be about the, the scene as a whole and not just going to a, a band that I like or a friend's band or for that reason. Everything for me was about just sharing my life mm. with the people's lives that are at shows and and kind of making that one big part of it. Right. So it's not about just the music. It's not about just that band. It's about the scene. It's about the lighting people, the audio people, the bartenders. Everybody in that kind of piece just became relevant to me. Mm. I used to take notice of what people were doing at shows before they played. You know, each band member had a certain, you know, pregame thing that they did. You mm. know, some bands were out in the crowd watching the openers. Some bands were, you know, backstage and never came out. Right. You know, so I took notice in all of that. I like, they make fun of me out here now because they're like, why are you so early, like hours before a show? Because I take interest in how it's put together. Right. I like watching that. I like seeing that interaction that most people that show up at that door time doesn't know what really goes into that and the making of it from start to finish. Right. Even when I used to go to like VFW shows, a lot of the bands would start reaching out to me to ask me, okay, hey, you know, what order should we put the bands in? And and that's kind of how I said, I said, what could I do to help these young bands? And that was the start of me, you know, my first website, which mm. was basically just links and lists right. of bands that I came across. And they would call me up and I'd say, well, just go on my website and go through the bands and see what fits what you're looking for. Right. You know, things like that. That's so, cool. Yeah. That's awesome. What kind of changes have you seen in the Asbury music uh, scene uh, since you started? Uh, um, <laughs> well, for one, it's, you know, there's so much of everything. Right. You know, it's, it's a great, great place as a fan of music um and amazing to kind of you know walk down a five block radius and see 14 shows going on mm -hmm. um but it also makes it very difficult for for the bands to kind of find their way as well right you know and i and again that's something that i take notice of and you know kind of see the patterns that go on behind the scenes i don't i don't kind of like to put my opinion in there um, unless I'm asked, right. um, for obvious reasons, it's not my business. Mm. Um, you know, I'm there to hang out, have a great time, take pictures and go home. Right. You know, I'm not that guy that's, you're going to find at 3 a.m. in an IHOP with a band, you know, it shows over, I go home and to my wife, Right. you know, um, I'll hang, I chill, I have a lot of fun and, but at the end of the day, you know, I have a family, I have mm. a job and, right. you know, it all ties together. Yeah, I mean, that's the crazy thing is um, for the number of shows you shoot, like just actually shooting shows like half the battle, then you have to like sure. actually work with the pictures. Yeah. Like how many pictures do you like? I mean, an average show, you know, it's it could be three, four, five, six hundred, right. you know, depending on how many bands there are or how many shows I hit in one night. Right. You know, I mean, if I do a weekend gig, it can, you know, it could be thousands. Right. You know, so. and then <laughs> What's your process like working I mean, with know, the photos? It's after kind that? of like you know. I guess you know. Obviously, I have to sit there and proprietize what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. So you know, what do you what do you do? I mean, uh, over the years, I've learned through other areas of my life and things I've been through is how to uh, time management and organization. Right. So I would kind of sit there and say, okay, what do I have to do today? Yep. What would I like to do today? And right. those kind of things. So obviously, when it comes to shows, you know. Obviously, anything that's paid gigs, I kind of take care of first, right? You know, and then it goes down from there. Yeah. You know, and they see how much I could get done each night. So, what's the pony expect? Say for like a national act coming through, like when do they want photos back from you? How quickly after it's, a show? It's depends. I mean, when it comes to the, that's the cool thing. To be honest with you, one thing I love about what I do for the pony, um, they trust me. Right. You know, they trust me in, in terms of being a professional. Um, then I'm going to do the right thing. Right. We don't sit down and talk about that. It's basically do the show. Um, during a show, if it's a relevant show, I'll send a few pictures over to my contact right. that they'll upload on social media. After that, 
I'll edit the pictures as soon as I could, and right. then I send them a link. That's cool. There's no demand. They don't get on my case unless there's something they need right? Um, kind of a thing. So that's why it really works well for me. Right. Um, but I, you know, they know that I'm, my job, I take it very seriously, even though it's not my main job financially. Right. Um, I take it very seriously as it was. Right. So, you know, I always try to get everything done as soon as I could for the purpose of staying on track. Right. That's cool. Um, so th I thought it was fitting tonight because we have a band playing, actually, so I thought you were a good fit for that. But I was just going to tell those dudes, if they want to set up while we're doing this, that's fine. Like, if they don't, they don't have to wait. Um, so, Jeff, you, like, you'll have some, some background noise of, like, a sure. band setting up. It'll be just, like, <laughs> yeah. one of your, uh, your usual gigs, you know. <laughs> um, so we got Waiting on Mongo coming in, and I noticed you know these guys yeah, as soon as they walked in. Um, so have you shot them before? Yeah, many times. Yeah, yeah. that's cool. Yeah, awesome dudes and uh, great sound and right. always a fun, fun band to be around. Totally. Yeah. Um, that's really cool. So you another, like, one of your, I guess, assignments or whatever you call it, a regular gig is, like, the Lake House, uh, their big gig weekends. Yes, which is, like, their student showcases. Right. And, and that's, like, a marathon because, like, it, it runs from, like, <laughs> Friday to, like, you know, like... Yeah early friday evening to like sunday night and you're like there throughout and I mean, the, the coolest thing with that and which is also the hardest thing with that is you know the younger bands they all play like 14 instruments right. each kid oh, so, so, all moving so around. it's not like a regular band where it's like shoot a couple of songs and then you could take a break right i literally got to shoot every song because every song you know one of the students could be playing a different instrument, right. so I want to be able to get each kid playing each instrument. Right, right. So it's hard, and then at the end of each band, I have to do like a group picture right. about the step and repeat. So yeah, it's it's you know there's no downtime. Right. You know what? As the bands get a little older, yep. you know then it's a little different because they don't play as many instruments. So right. I could kind of start towards the end of the night taking that little five, ten minute break after a few songs. Right. But it's, you know, for that whole weekend, whatever I'm shooting, it comes out to something like, I don't know, thirty six hours. That's insane. Yeah. yeah. I know for me, like so I was playing at Lake House for a little while. Like I'd never played music before and decided I'm gonna learn a little and was playing some bass and to me that was like almost like there were two things. One was like being on a stage in a club in Asbury it was like this is cool, yeah. right? But also then seeing my picture with like the Jeff Crespi Rocks logo <laughs> on it, I was like, damn, like I kind of arrived in Asbury scene, you know what I mean? Like well, I finally it, got my Jeff Crespi pick. It's funny because like, you know, I remember like bands would like, you know, obviously a lot of bands that hire me mm. and, uh, you know, I'd always tell them, listen, you know, I'll send you the pictures as soon as I'm done editing. And, right. you know, I always make two copies, one with and one without my logo. And they'll be like, no, I want the ones with the logo right, because right. that's, that's kind of what I guess it symbolizes, you know, right. Like you just said, like yep. it's, it's a picture with my logo on it, and right. they like that. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. So, it yeah. felt like I was, you know, bumping myself up a level <laughs> with, with some other people, you know what I mean? So yeah. that was cool. So what's it like working with bands like, um, so you work with some bands outside of just live photos, like you'll do yeah, like press sure. photos yeah, or I love doing artwork that for, you know, yeah. not that there's really CDs anymore, but that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, I've done, I've done probably, I haven't uh, counted, but I've probably done about 15 CD covers already. That's cool. right. I'm all local bands and, um, you know, stuff like that, CD sleeves and, right. you know, promo shots and, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah that's cool. Sure. And then what's it like um, working with, say, like a, a national touring act coming through the Pony? Does it vary from artist to artist, like how willing they are to do some stuff with you? It's, it's different. I'll, I'll tell you one example. Like you had a, uh, Tom Morello uh, was at the Pony, mm -hmm. and you had a, a shot with him out just standing by the summer stage yep. with his guitar in the air. So obviously he, you were able to talk to him and say, yeah. hey, let's go out and, and take some shots. And it happens, right. but it's not what I aim for. Okay. Um, one thing I've made sure that, you know, most people that know me know I'm not a chaser. Right. Um, I'm not that guy that's just going to show up places because somebody might be there. Right. It's not what I'm doing this for. This is not for fame and fortune. Right. It's for personal, you know, um, uh, dealings. Mm. It's for uh, sharing what I've learned over the years in terms of as a human being and, and portraying that. Right. Um, it's all about the human nature side of it. Right. Um, the music is just a piece of the puzzle that ties it all together. Mm. And the photography is just a creative outlet that I use to tie it all together. Right. But at the end of the day, it's all about 
the conversations and the people that I meet along the way that means the most to me. Right. So there are certain times where, you know, something like that might be cool and happen, mm. but that's not what I look for. Right. You know, it's not that's not what I'm aiming to do for right. most of those bands. That's why the national acts are just bands that come through the venues that I, you know, shoot, but mm. my my main purpose is more the local scene. Okay. You know, in terms that's of cool. what I enjoy the most. Right. And what's the competition like amongst photographers? Because, like, <laughs> I, you know. It's insane. Yeah. Um, it's insane. I mean, you know, it is what it is, and and, and everybody could make it what they want to make it. Mm. Um, you know, listen, here's the bottom line. You know, I, I'm, a, I'm an older dude who, you know, relies on this to pay my bills. Right. That's the truth. Yep. You know, it's not my main gig financially, but... I need both jobs to pay my bills and keep my house. Sure. Bottom line. Right. Um, so, obviously, when it comes to that side of the coin, it's a serious matter for me. Sure. Um, that doesn't mean I'm going to go around, you know, trying to push people out the door. Right. It's not about that, and I understand that. Right. But I'm also going to be the guy that, you know, there's a lot of shows and a lot of events mm -hmm. that I'm at that, you know, other photographers will be there and right. say, oh, who are you here for? And I'm like, what do you mean? Right. And they'll go like, well, you know, what band are you shooting? And go, no, I was hired for the event. Right. They'll be like, really? I'm like, yeah. Right. You know, uh, and, and I think that's important to tell them that because it's not an ego thing. It's about understanding that I developed something that I worked my ass off for. Sure. To, you know, be able to, at some point, be able to bring something back in. Right. You know, for all the hard work I've done for years. Totally. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah, and it's wild because, like, I mean, obviously, you get the bigger events like See Here Now. Like, I saw you out shooting mm -hmm. that, and like, yeah. there were times where, like, all right, when the photographers could go out, there's like, I mean, event like that, there's 20, sure. 30 people coming out to shoot a band. Yeah, and we have, you know, things like that. There's certain events that I, you know, do for the fun of it. Mm -hmm. You know, some events I shoot for my friends' websites right. um, just to help them out and give them access to stuff. And, yeah. you know, things like that. It's more about I, the atmosphere. It's the being able to be out there and be part of the whole thing. Right. It's seeing all your friends. It's seeing all these people that you see at all the other shows. Yeah. Just having a ball at stuff like that. That's you know, cool. So. Right. Um, so in a weird way, it was a little full circle because you were at Kiss was doing a farewell tour. Yeah. Did you were you there to shoot that or just to see? Yeah, it? no, I actually had you access shot. to shoot. That's good. Cool. Yeah. And did your son go with you to that? No, nah. he didn't. Um, <laughs> um, that was kind of like I really, really had no expectations of being approved for that show. Right. Um, I was stunned when I got the the email saying mm. that I was approved for that show. That's cool. And when I got down there, you know, I went down there with some friends who were just going to the show. Right. And um, from a photographer standpoint, you know, most of the photographers there were very, you know, well known big wigs that sure. I know, right. you know, and see around and all very iconic type photographers for yep. the most part. Um, and even they said they said they had they had an easier time getting to into that show than some of the other shows. Oh, yeah. And you would have thought the garden would have been the one that was the hardest. But, right. but it turned out, you know, the publicist was very nice That's and, cool. and gave me access and it was really cool. Nice. You know? So uh, so where do you want to go from here with your photo? <laughs> What's your <laughs> That's the question of the day. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Right. Like, you know, I'm so much like I love right now doing what I'm doing. You still love that it. That I don't have any understanding yet what I'm going to do with it all. Right. I really don't. Um, you know, people say galleries and people say this and that. And galleries is not my thing. Right. Um, I think I really at some point want to just develop and just start making like, you know, coffee table photo books mm. type thing. I mean, that's, that's cool. kind of the idea in my head. Right. But I have no understanding yet of a plan or structure cool. of what I'm going to do with this. I'm just like, you know, every night is just that revolving circle of right. you know editing until I nod out, you know, and, and, and kind of getting back up at 5 a.m. to go to my day job and right. just figuring out what shows I have, you know, pieces of cardboard with just list of shows for every venue, you right. know, sitting in my car, you know, just kind of going over everything. And, that's wild. And that's not including all the other stuff that comes in via text or messages or emails. Hey, Jeff, we're playing Friday night here right. on Saturday night there. It'd be great if you could pop in. And, you know, and then I got to sit there and figure that all so out. So you're like a mad scientist. Yeah, so, so wild. either your wife's like an extremely patient woman <laughs> or you seriously pissed her off back in the day. No, I don't know she, which it is. My wife is just such a... She's just such a, a person that's like, if you love it, then do it. 
Right. You know, do what you got to do. If you're having fun, do what you got to do. And the other part of that is I'm married 32 years. Mm. I was already well established in, in my marriage and family life at the time that I started this. So right. so none of that came into play where, you know, hey, it's a new relationship and you're out every night and hanging out in bars and clubs. Right. And that's not what it's about. Right. Um, you know, as you know, I, you know I, I'm clean and sober 30 years. Right. So, you know, my life is, you know, in <laughs> bars and clubs, but I don't drink, I don't drug, I don't do any of that right. stuff. So my wife knows where I am every night. And, right. and at the beginning, in the first few years, I would come home every night and I would make her sit by the computer with me and I would show her every picture I would show that you know so she knew who these people were right. so she knew who when if she somebody saw me in pictures you know how many people would reach out to her oh my god you let your your husband go out every night did you see the pictures the people that he's hanging out with and all that kind of, she'd be like I know where he is. He comes home to me. <laughs> right. You know, kind That's of a thing. Funny. So, yeah. Does she still work in music? She doesn't. No. Right. That was, uh, she worked for ADA for about 11 years. Right. Um, and she would come home, you know, she would call me up during the day and say, hey, uh, you ever hear a Green Day? Be like, yeah, why? Well, they're in my office playing, you know, kind right. of a thing. It would be stuff cool. like that. You That's know? awesome. So. Uh, anyone you haven't shot that you want to shoot or any venue you want to shoot in? It, it, the funny thing is that was always a question that I was asked and it was the answer was always Kiss because yeah. you know, that was the first band I oh, ever took cool. my son to see and right. that was always the band I said it would be great to shoot so, you hit so it. I got to do that That's so, but you know I, there's nothing out there that I you know am dying to do right. or that I need to do mm. or that I consider like you know oh my god I'm one of those guys like I don't believe in putting anybody on a pedestal yeah. to me everybody is a human being first totally. and that's how I like to perceive it and right. treat people you know whether you're playing a band whether you're a photographer you're a human being first and either you present yourself as a human being or you don't right. what you do after that is all you know second nature that's cool i mean i can totally tell that's genuine about you because that's how i met you was just you know bsing in a club before a band and like like you said you like to wander around see yeah. what people are doing and that's how we started talking originally so I, one of the coolest things i love is being at a show having a conversation or talking to somebody you know during that show and and walk out at the end of the night and never even know their name right to me, that's the coolest thing in the world because right. it's that conversation that I'll remember years down the line, not even remember who the band was playing. Right. You know, so that, that means a lot to me, those conversations. Right. That's cool. Awesome, man. Um, I appreciate you coming in. We're going to, like, follow up your uh, your appearance with some live music cool. in here. I've got, like, smoke sheens, flamethrowers, all sorts of stuff <laughs> coming in. This is awesome. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, all right. Once again, Jeff Crespi, C-R-E-S-P-I. Uh, check out jeffcrespyrocks.com and follow Jeff on Instagram at jeffcrespyrocks. Jeff, thanks very much. Thank you, guys. Once again, I'm Evan Balmer. Follow me on Instagram at Evan Balmer and look for the Mullet Cast on Facebook. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you very much. <laughs>